Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Fast Flag Facts with John. I'm John and this is the show where we talk about flags from around the world. Last time on the show we talked about the national flag for Greece and we talked about its interesting connection to the book Frankenstein as well as a tiny college town in the state of Michigan. This week we are looking at the flag for the largest city in Canada. This is the city flag for Toronto. The flag for Toronto was designed by a man named Renato DeSantis. Not to be confused with the hilariously terrible governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis. He was born in 1953 and he is still alive today. He was 21 years old when he entered into a competition by the Toronto Flag Design Committee to redesign the flag for the city. And he was also a student at George Brown College. The flag for Toronto is an abstract depiction of the Toronto City Hall, which looks like this. You can see sort of the two towers curving around the flag. The outline for the City Hall is white on a blue background. There's also a red maple leaf at its base, which is the symbol for the nation of Canada, as well as a feature on the national flag. The colors of the flag themselves do not represent anything in particular, although the red on the maple leaf does evoke the national flag. And also the sort of curving arc shape is supposed to be evocative of the letter T, which is the first letter of the name of the city. The story here is pretty straightforward. It was the winning design of a 19 1974 competition held by the City of Toronto Flag Design Committee. The flag got a slight redesign in 1999. Several townships around the suburban area of Toronto ended up amalgamating into the city proper, and the local government thought that this was a good opportunity to perhaps revisit or redesign the flag, and so there was another competition. Even though many different designs were submitted, Renato suggested just taking the current flag design and changing its shape slightly to fit in with more modern flag parameters. As of 1999, DeSantis was the head of an advertising firm specializing in logos and designs. So you can tell that throughout his life, Renato was a man very interested in symbology and it made him particularly good at designing the city flag. Even though he's still alive, he has been pretty quiet as of recently. I believe that he is retired. He does not have much of an online presence. Now, truth be told, there is not too many places that you can see this flag. It is not incredibly popular and unlike some of the other city flags that we have talked about, it is not one that features on local sports teams, and it's not one that has really been adopted by the people as the symbol of the city. Some of the complaints about this flag are that it is reflective of a building which even though it is important in a political sense, it's not a particularly important building to the city of Toronto. Some people have suggested that if the flag of Toronto is going to use a building in its design, that it should reflect a building that is more important to the culture or the self-identity of the city. Perhaps something like the CN Tower, which is the largest structure in the city of Toronto and one of the largest structures in the world. So there's a few reasons why I wanted to talk about this flag today. First of all, I think it's interesting to point out that you can design a flag at any age. Renato was only 21 years old. He was still a pretty young guy when he entered into this flag design contest. Vexillology is not something that is exclusively for the middle age or the old. I also personally like this flag because it is non-traditional. Those curving asymmetrical lines are something that you don't see too often in flags. Most flags are pretty rigid in their linear, even mirror image designs. While some people don't like that the maple leaf is on the flag, I kind of like that it's in a weird location. It's not in the canton and it's not in the center. It's, it's down in the bottom there. It's, it's really unique for a flag. The other reason I wanted to talk about this flag though is I do think that it speaks a little bit to the dangers of the just design a new flag philosophy. A lot of flags that we have talked about on this show and will talk about in the future are ones that are considered bad flags by people who are very interested in simply the aesthetics or design of the flag. As such, a lot of people advocate for new or updated versions of flags. This flag is less than 50 years old and the city hall, which it represents, was built in 1965. Nothing on the flag is really older than that. So not only does it lack any true symbology that is core to the identity of someone from Toronto, it also doesn't have much of a connection to the place or the history of Toronto. So while the flag looked pretty good from a design perspective in the 70s, and some might argue that it still looks kind of interesting, it doesn't have a lot of meat there. There's nothing deeper beneath the surface. So while a lot of people might advocate for the gut decision of just changing or updating flags so that they look aesthetically pleasing, I think there is something to be said about having meaningful 
beautiful symbology in your flags. So that does it for us this week. Just a quick little episode to whet your appetites. Next week, we're going to stay in the Western Hemisphere. We're going to go back to the United States and look at the flag for the U.S. state of New Mexico. Thank mm-hmm. you.